Hello everyone and welcome back to the first video of 2023. So to kick off this new year, I decided to show you guys my personal watch collection as of the start of this year. So it will be interesting to see, I guess, the watch collection evolve as the year progresses, but well, let's kick off you know, my watch collection video. So first and foremost, you have this, the Rainbow Casio Oak Jellyfish. I think I saw Kane Shikori wear this on court and I fell in love with it. Of course, you know, this is the iconic Casio Oak shape. I do think that the Casio is the best G-Shock there is to have. But here is something a little bit interesting, you know, full transparent case and shred, therefore the jellyfish, and you have the rainbows of uh, markers, as well as the paint splatters on the dial. Very interesting, very unique, very fun. And I think, you know, this is something that I wear quite a lot. Up next, you know, is the Hamilton Fuel uh, Kaki Mechanical. Again, this is a hit purchase rather than hard purchase. I bought this because it's such great value for money, right? There is a 80 hour mechanical uh, movement, 80 hour power with 80 hours of power reserve, titanium case, you know, and an esteemed Swiss made brand, Hamilton. This is a watch I bring overseas when you know, I want something that is robust, durable, but not that precious, you know, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I, this has become a staple of my collection. Alright, we move on to the Timex Marlin Snoopy. Now, Timex is a great brand. I think Timex, the Timex Weekender, was one of the first analog watches that I ever had. So, I had some sort of personal connection to Timex, if you will. And of course, you know, uh, being a writer myself, I really do like the Snoopy. I don't think you guys can see, but it's actually Snoopy on a typewriter, you know, for the 80th anniversary of Peanuts. So yeah, when I saw this variant of the Marlin, which I again think that is the best sort of design that Timex has in its current catalog, I knew I have to have it. I don't really wear this much, but it's just a cute little dress watch or something I wear when I feel a bit more quirky and eccentric. Okay, up next is my Seiko 5. But not just any Seiko 5, this is Seiko 5 one piece of Luffy edition. So you can see sort of the Luffy uh, Gear 5 an anime, one piece anime fans will know what I'm talking about. The anim uh, the Gear 5 sort of motifs you know, on the dial. I just really do like it. I've been a fan of one piece since young and I like how subtle you know, the one piece of uh, designs are here. Very nice looking watch, very stealthy looking watch. If I wear this you know, outside and I don't tell someone that it's anime inspired, I don't think anyone would you know, think about the whip or something. So yeah, one of a personal joys of mine. Okay, next we have the critically acclaimed Tissot Pure X Automatic here in the blue dial. Again, it's probably one of my head over heart uh, purchases. I'll admit, you know, I got caught up in the hype, not just of the Tissot Pure X in general, but of the integrated sports watch, you know, uh, vibe. Of course, the Nautilus, the Royal Oak, the prices have skyrocketed, unattainable. Therefore, I decided to try out, you know, this integrated sports watch. Look with the Timex, uh, with the Tissot Pure X, excuse me. So yeah, it's a rather nice watch. I do wear it semi often. You know, I wear it as a grab and go. You know, on days where I can't be bothered to decide which watch to wear, this is what I go for. It just blends in with everything. It's a very nice of watch, sporty but also a little bit dressy due to how, you know, you can see how reflective and polished its surfaces are. All right, up next is the Longines Heritage nineteen forty five. This is a watch I've had for quite some time now, I think about 3 years now. I first bought it, you know, when I was at the start of my watch collecting journey and I have thought about selling it, you know, now and then, but it has stuck by me ever since and that's because, you know, it's just so eminently uh, beautiful. You can see the way the sun brush, the brush uh, copper dowel plays the light here. It's just so beautiful and I love the vintage vibe, but also the modern sizing, so it's 40mm here. So yeah, uh, it's a great watch and I wear, wear it you know, when I want to be a little bit more vintage per se, my dressing. And yeah, it's a great heritage watch for me to wear, again, from a very well-established brand. So next up, we have the, you know, Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue Dial. I really do like this watch, although I'll, again, I'll say that it's a head of a heart decision. This isn't a watch that really sets, you know, my heart fluttering by any means, but it's such a great watch. Ready for money, you know, it's a great in-house movement with a silicon hairspring. And it's just a very versatile watch that pairs, you know, with almost everything. Again, this is one that I really, sometimes I bring with me on my travels. I just went on a cruise, this is the watch. I think the only dive watch in my collection. This is the watch that I brought with me on the cruise. And um, yeah, I do think that Tudor has, has hit it out of the park uh, with this Tudor Black Bay. I love the Blue Dial variant, especially, you know, because it's just something a little bit different from the regular Black Bay 58s. Okay, we move on, you know, to the Ming 1709. This is my recent Ming 1709 Blue. I quite like it. Um, you know, I started off with very independent micro brand watches. Ming, of course, started off as a micro brand from Malaysia, which is not that far away from us here in Singapore. So I, I've, it's quite interesting to see how Ming has grown by leaps and bounds, you know, winning GPAG awards. And I just felt I had to have a little slice of, you know, Ming. And this is the one that I chose, the 17, 
09 really do like how sim simple it is but also the floating mini track the scatter nice hands and of course the gear shade down really nice especially here in blue then we have his uh, counterpart the chrono toki now of course chrono again you know so the opposite of ming in a sense you know you have this huge independent watchmaker decided to make more affordable watches and i really feel i love the toki with that sort of unique uh summon down now if you have watched a few of my previous videos you know i'm a big fan of summon down i have another one here but i've not quite seen a summon down like this you know toki sort of like pinkish you know almost like it legit looks like you know like summon sashimi of sorts so yeah, I really friendly with it. I think it looks great. Pair on this grey uh, shrap atelier shrap. Very nice of Japanese watch. Okay, we now move on to some of my heavier heaters, some of my prized possessions. This is the Tech Hoyer Monaco so reissue. Now, when we think of Monaco, most people think of the blue down Monaco. I don't really like to go with the norm, so I decided to go for a grey down one. And historically speaking, when the Monaco was first launched, it launched in two colorways, the blue and the grey. So this is historically correct. You can see you know, the Hoyer logo there. Everything historically correct, uh, and you can see the sunburst and brush nature down as well. Whereas you know the the one with the, the blue down one with the Hoyer logo, the one that you know McQueen wore in the movie, that had a matte blue down that I felt was rather flat. Here the brush down gives you know, the watch a bit more dynamism, I would say, and yeah, very nice watch. Again, a very iconic watch from Hoyer. Okay, we move on to the IWC Leopard Prince. So I really do like this watch. When I think of IWC, I do think of its you know, pilot watches first. And I really like the simplistic design of this, but you know how it's not that boring due to the sunburst blue dial that we have here. It also has the, let me show you guys, the Le Petit Prince of motif at the back. And I'm a big fan of the story as well. So yeah, this is a watch that reminds me of the Le Petit Prince of story and the values you know, that the stories of espouses. Next, my Speedmaster, but not any Speedmaster, it's a Speedmaster Hot Chocolate. So again, Speedmaster, perhaps one of the most iconic watches, you know, ever produced. Uh, one of the watches that every enthusiast should have in their collection. But again, for me, I don't really want to have something that everybody else has, right? So even though I want a Speedmaster, I want something a little bit different. And therefore, I got this brown dial one. Lovely, 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 lovely watch. I, they call it the Hot Chocolate, and I love myself a Hot Chocolate, especially... So yeah, one that I felt really fit in my personality, but again, I love how subtle it is. You know, if you wear it on the wrist, people will assume that it's the normal black dial speedmaster. Only when you hold it up close, you know, can you tell that oh actually it's not really black, it's brown. And I love, you know, when the people get that aha moment that like, oh why is this? This is not the normal black dial speedmaster. I love it when people get that reaction. So yeah, another one of my prized possessions. Alright, now we have the Rolex uh date just 16234. I bought this for my 25th birthday. Um, I really do really like this watch. Again, one of, perhaps one of my top three watches I would say in my collection, uh, based on how much I love them. I always wanted a date jazz. I think the date jazz is sort of the quintessential nature of a uh, quintessential design of Rolex, right? I yeah, perhaps the most common I would say uh model of that Rolex producers and the one that most people associate with Rolex. However, there's been pretty, you know, there's been plenty of date jazz, you know, over the years. I chose firstly the one six two three four because it has a quick set date, you know, it's the three oh three five movement and it also has a sapphire crystal. So it has a nice amount of sort of modernism there. But I chose this particular reference as well. I think it's this one was produced in the mid nineties, so again around where I was when I was born. Because it has sort of more quirky dials like this. This summon dial that we have here. This dial can longer be found on modern days of uh, date just thirty six. So you can see this copper uh copper summon dial really 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 very nice. Most 1624s that you see on the market are white, silver, black, or sometimes maybe blue dials, but you rarely see, you know, this copper dial here, and I really do like how rare uh, this dial is, and yeah, a great condition purchase, I know I really do love wearing it, again, a very versatile watch that can, that shredders, you know, the realm between dress and sports, I really do like this one, a very nice find. Okay, then we have, you know, the Grand Seiko Shunbun, I've done an entire video on this, actually I've done videos on a lot of these watches, but... I just did a video on this. I always want a Grand Seiko, you know, I've, I'm a big Japanese fan, I watch a lot of anime, a lot of Japanese food. And to me, I think a Grand Seiko really represents the pinnacle of Japanese watchmaking, especially with their spring drive movement. I think the innovation behind the spring drive is crazy. And as you can see, I quite like your pinkish salmon copper dial. Here, this SBJ413 has a pink dial, you know, one that is supposed to sort of reflect sakura blossoms. 
with this Shunbun model. So yeah, I really fell in love with it. Very nice to wear as well, very light on the wrist due to the titanium case. Uh, and again, yeah, I think at first when this was released, it was like a exclusive, you know, a US exclusive. So something a bit, you know, rare, I would say, in the Asian market. So yeah, I really like, you know, having something out of the norm again with this Shunbun. However, I would say that the current pride of my collection with this, my Cartier Tang Jumbo from the 1970s. I might be wrong, but I believe, at least to my knowledge, this is the only one, you know, from uh, the New York boutique that is currently present here in Singapore. I do think that this is the only one here in Singapore. So let me bring this closer to the camera. I have been searching for this watch for the longest time, ever since, you know, I saw Theo and Harry's uh, publish a video on it online. Yes, this lovely Art Deco case, you can see the step case here. This really nice pure white uh, tank down and of course the Roman numerals. It has this elegance to it, you know, that honestly speaking, modern day Cartiers don't really have. You can see how beautiful it is, yet it's also pretty large, right? Uh, and I think it really does wear very well on my 7 inch wrist. I have tried, you know, other Cartier tanks, they are either too small, like the RGB, the colored Cartier tanks, the quartz ones. Or you know like the tanks uh solo mass xl the automatic variant of the mass or the previous generation solo they're too big right this really shredders a nice sort of in between and i love you know how it's gold as well of course i think a cartier tank should be gold cartier tank should be gold to reflect that sort of dressiness so yeah really rare uh reference i would say again i believe it's the only one in singapore i'm really 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 very lucky and very happy to have it in my collection. I would say this is probably like the star of my collection right now. All right, then we move on to the swatches. You can see, you know, on both sides. Let's start with the moon swatch. You know, uh, Holding Key recently rated the moon swatch or proclaimed the moon swatch as, you know, the watch of 2022. I think there was quite a bit of backlash regarding that. But, you know, I do agree with it in some sense. Why? Because the moon swatch was the only watch, I would say, in recent memory that has really transcended the watch community, right? Even mainstreams or and so of people really lasted over the moon swatch. So here it is. I just did a video on this. This is the Mission to the Sun. And I padded here on some curved and silicon straps from Shrap Atelier. Really, really nice watch. Uh, the yellow took some getting used to. But now, you know, I wear it when I play tennis because it really reminds me, you know, of a tennis ball. But yeah, you can see there's a sunburst of finishing to the watch. The only, the Mission to the Sun is the only watch that has the sunburst down. And I really do like you know, what it represents, which is this groundbreaking collaboration and also this outreach of sorts to the general sort of uh, population, to the masses. So yeah, I really do like my mission to the sun. It's something that I wear, I think, on a weekly basis whenever I play tennis. And to me, even though it's not a star of my collection, that will be the Cartier, but I do believe it is the star of, you know, like the sun is, it is the star of the Moon Swatch collection. Alright, and last but certainly not least is another swatch. This is the Vincent Van Gogh MoMA edition. You can see the MoMA uh, tag here. I bought this quite some time back and honestly speaking, I do like this, prefer this to the Moon Swatch. See because of what it represents, I think it's done so well. You can see the Starry Starry Nights sort of motif. Display on the dark, you can see how vivid, you know, the brush strokes are. It really does look like a painting. I can see that carried on, you know, on the shirt itself. Look at that. For a little over hundred dollars, I think it's really, really well made, and you know it really is our statement piece. It really is art on the wrist, which you know over the years in recent times, it has been what Swatch has come to represent. You know, art, arty, funky pieces on the wrist, and I think this really encapsulate uh, what Swatch is about. So yeah, really do like this uh, Swatch Vincent Van Gogh. All right, so this is my twenty twenty three collection. You know, seventeen watches that you know I'm very proud to own. I love each and every one of these watches. I don't think I'll let any of them go. But we shall see, of course. Uh, I do have a few more that I want to add to my collection. Namely, a special reversal and maybe an El Primero. And to add those to my collection, I have to let, unfortunately, some of these go. So we'll see, you know, come, you know, uh, end of this year or early next year, how my collection has changed. But as of now, this is my 2023 collection and it's a collection I'm immensely proud of. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, this day of the collection. For me, do let me know which of my watches you know you guys like the most. And as always, share the video around, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Ciao!